Hey everybody, one of the things that we get asked for most on this channel is to see the collection that's behind me or in some other rooms in a little bit more detail. We've done videos like this before where we've shown off the collection. And today what I wanted to do is show you a little bit more of an updated view of what we have either on the walls or in the shelves or on display uh, around the house a little bit. One of the things that came today, ironically today is a Sunday, uh, but this child uh, that we ordered from Amazon uh, back in, uh, I want to say the beginning of December, um, finally came off of pre-order and Amazon delivered it on a Sunday. This thing looks uh, pretty awesome. I'm not the world's biggest fan of Baby Yoda, um, but I do love uh, The Mandalorian. I think it's one of the greatest shows in years on a regular TV or any other network. Uh, but the, the sculpt on his head looks great, although I wish we'd have more IG-11 uh, material, maybe some more Mandalorian stuff. Um, that, but this looks great. I can't wait to um, put him on display somewhere. And to go along with him, we also had this Mando that's still in the box um, from a Star Wars day, not Star Wars day, but uh, Star Wars Midnight um, day. It's kind of like an annual thing now when movies are coming out. So we've got him. Um, we've got some other Mandalorian stuff that we'll show you in a little bit. I'm going to go along with him also. Uh, just what I'm picking off of the table next to me is this Luke Skywalker uh, figure that's still uh, in the box. I know we pointed this out in the video back in November where uh, they had a little bit of uh, difficulty spelling his name. This has since been corrected for um, the uh, toys on the shelves. And I spelled it wrong in multiple places, so um, it's interesting, like here on the back of the box. No spell check at uh, Hasbro, I guess. But I'll take you on a spin of some stuff that we have. It's not all Star Wars, and I gotta warn you ahead of time, you guys are gonna comment below that some things are really dusty, and I gotta be honest, they are dusty. People comment all the time and ask, how do you keep things clean when you have the little figures and things like that? And the, the answer is you do your best, and the Swifter, or Swiffer, rather, is a friend, but it's not the, the best solution. The best solution is to not collect anything at all. Well, we'll start with some of the stuff that's on the shelf that's directly behind me. These are retro uh, reproduction figures. I had tons of Star Wars stuff when I was growing up. All of these retro figures, my mom used to take me to Courtesy Drugs in Flushing, New York on a regular basis to go pick out Star Wars figures. And then when I hit my teens, my dad said it was a good idea to throw them all away. And I did. And they were all gone. So I can live or relive my childhood with these. Behind them, we have these um, animated figures of Kylo Ren and Chewbacca. Chewbacca looks really kind of weird with his fur and his plastic head, but uh, that's what's up there. Um, and in here, um, we've got a Rancor. You have Jabba. This was the um, three and three quarter inch Jabba figure, I think. Or maybe, no, no, I'm, I apologize. I believe this is the six inch Jabba. Um, and we've got a Biker Scout. I love the Biker Scout and the way that this displays normally, uh, even with the dust like I told you about. Um, looks kind, kind of like he's floating, um, as well as Farm Boy Luke um, in there, and a celebration um, program in the background, and this Star Wars Jedi Path book that's in the box. If you've seen this book before, it actually opens up and uh, has a whole mechanics in it that is interactive. And way behind there is the original Star Wars soundtrack uh, from John Williams. So I figured I'd put that on a shelf. Down below, just another myriad of things that I enjoyed. We have 6-inch Han on his Tauntaun. Um, and then a pop figure Luke that was from the Star Wars pop figure boxes. Um, behind him is a Slave Leia. Um, this little thing here is uh, Puck from Star Wars Night at the Lightning years back. Um, and we've got some random cards and playing cards, um, some origami stuff for Star Wars off to the side, um, a cup that uh, has an issue with uh, the writing being backwards from uh, Tervis. I notified them that there was an issue with the way that this was being printed and put out, and they sent me uh, a replacement which had the same exact problem again. Um, there is a jigsaw puzzle that Jess and I uh, put together years back so I kept that on display as well and then you get below to some of the dust here 
um, just some re-release type figures or retro type figures, droids, Disney stuff in here. So um, when Disney had Star Wars weekends or even in the park during normal times, they would package um, their characters as Star Wars characters as well. This was you know, kind of a big thing actually during Star Wars weekends at times when they had limited release figures like this. But you have Huey, Dewey, and Louie as Jawas. And on the back of the package you can see where they've got some of their other characters including Goofy as um, Cad Bane, I believe. This is a Lego uh, limited release of Slave One that was at Celebration uh, in Orlando years back. Uh, and there it is, Celebration 6 exclusive and we've built that inside there probably one of the biggest questions that i get from other collectors and folks that watch the channel is what drives me to collect a certain something is there something specific that i like to collect and honestly most of the time it's just things that strike me as really cool i really like this darth vader uh toy this is a wind-up toy that's kind of like a throwback to classic days so you wind him up his wheels would go on the bottom um Certainly, probably not one of the biggest things that folks would go out and run to collect, but I thought he was super cool, so one of my favorite things. And actually, Darth Vader gets to be a pretty common theme with some of the stuff that I collect, because there is a lot of Vader things. He's my favorite character in the movies, and arguably the star of the full Skywalker legacy. Um, so you kind of have like a candy holder or a mug, um, but these were Mighty Mugs from probably... 10, 15 years ago, maybe? I mean, you got the Vader and you have the Vader without um, the mask on, um, as well as behind him, Vader in his chamber, and then you have the 500th, I think it's the 500th, yep, 500th figure of Vader, Vader, Darth Tater in the background, and these models I think were from Revel um, back in the day, and it is a little dusty, but you take his head off and everything. And then the same carries true in the back there. We have a fan from Star Wars Celebration in Orlando. Hence the orange Death Star, um, a Lego Tie Fighter. Uh, we have these guys. Death Star plans are not in the main computer. I love stormtroopers that talk, and Vader. <laughs> and then these were the bigger Vaders before Hasbro did the uh, six-inch line. We had unleashed figures that were kind of not posable, but just standing where um, they could be displayed. You move up another shelf. We've got another unleashed uh, Chewbacca behind the Death Star. That's another thing that I love to collect. Um, and this Master Replica's Anakin Skywalker um, lightsaber. This was a limited edition back in the day when Master Replica's held the license to make lightsabers. Now you can get these types of uh, sabers at Disney parks. It's becoming more and more common. Up above, Russian nesting dolls with General Grievous. There's a Luke in the back. And we have another one of those Revel um, model heads. I believe it's Revel with C-3PO. Down below, we've got a myriad of other items, more Death Stars, all kinds of Death Stars. Um, and here's one of the Unleashed Vaders actually in a box. This was a uh, Best Buy exclusive. We have a can holder here, or Kuzi R2-D2. Another Death Star uh, for the Diamondbacks uh, giveaway. Another Mighty Mugs with Han Solo. Um, the Yoda that's hiding, his eyes are terrifying. He's older and his latex uh, just did away with, so he's got like demon eyes. And another Yoda that's like a force trainer. In the back are Star Wars cereal boxes that lined up together um, to promote uh, the Phantom Menace, I believe, or um, Revenge of the Sith. I'm not quite sure. It might be um, Phantom Menace. Um, and then remote control R2-D2. So before Disney was selling the uh, droids that you can make, um, this R2-D2 was kind of the precursor and you could have it come out different paces and so forth. Um, and in the corner here is a kind of a mess of things, but we do have the Tauntaun um, hobby horse um, from Celebration years back. Really, really funny stuff. Up top, some more uh, miscellaneous items. We've got a pin uh, from her universe from back in the day with uh, Soka Tano. Ashley Eckstein signing it. Another Unleashed figure with Luke. Um, some of the Fisher-Price toys that had come out, including the Falcon and X-Wing. And Pringles cans uh, that were um, named after the uh, heroes or stars of the Star Wars saga. On the walls around me, we do have some things that are not necessarily Star Wars related, like uh, Autograph Warren. I left that up there because Janie had uh, signed that. Janie no longer with us. 
Butch Walker, um, when he was with the Floyds, before he was doing his solo stuff and producing and in between South Gang. This record from uh, Bon Jovi is the first uh, pressing of New Jersey in Russia. That was the first commercial uh, or U.S. artist that was printed, I believe, on vinyl in Russia at the time. Um, and we have a calendar. I'll just leave this up with Empire Strikes Back. I think this is my favorite movie poster from Star Wars. A couple autographs here from Bruce. Um, these are all autographs that I got in person. So Bruce, Dice Man, Sammy Hagar, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kevin Smith. Got some Kiss items here. So I just kind of just throw everything around, including this Kiss toothbrush that played rock and roll all night when you brush your teeth. Um, Juliette Lewis, I love Juliette Lewis. And we've got um, other stuff here, Broadway Joe, Steve Buscemi, Mr. Pink, and Jam Master J. Um, and then up above here, we've got Gary Delabate from Howard Stern, P. Diddy or Puff Daddy, um, Jessica Hahn. I met her the same day as Gary Delabate. George Romero, uh, Megadeth, uh, the band Hell Yeah, this year's here is uh, from promo stuff that Disney did when Star Tours was going under their transformation from the old Star Tours ride to the new version. Next to Jessica Hahn, we've got Joe Satriani, and uh, down below we also have Chris Jericho, Joe Montana, uh, some Richie Sambora stuff. Richie Sambora, huge uh, influence on me, one of my favorite guitar players of all time. A couple autographs from him, including uh, one from all of Bon Jovi, and here's a Bon Jovi um, Christmas pictures that I had taken uh, back in the day, uh, as well as uh, Metallica stuff and Metallica autographs. And then up above, Jenna Jameson, Neil Sadaka, like I said, stuff is all over the place here, um, as well as uh, this autograph from Zach Wilde in 1992. Uh, this is when I was back doing stuff uh, with in music and writing, etc., and uh, did some stuff with Festa Pussycat, so I got able to um, hook up with Zach and Ozzy and those guys. And we've got an Ozzy autograph picture here as well. More Zach stuff and Black Label, uh, Bill Shatner, got this awesome picture of um, Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones and then more Star Wars autograph stuff. We've got Shock T, Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, David Prowse is Darth Vader. Um, Revolver uh, put on the uh, Mayhem Fest back in the day. We got all of the bands to sign that. Um, Ray Park, um, Jake Lloyd, Elvira. These are handwritten set lists from uh, John Bon Jovi from one of the Christmas shows. I got some more autographs over here, including uh, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, the Fast and Pussycat guys, everybody that worked on the CPR record. That's one of my favorite records, if you could find it or, or YouTube it. Really great stuff with Colvin Petrelli and Riley. Um, Dave Filoni's autograph over here. He basically met Dave at one celebration and a, a subsequent celebration had him sign uh, the picture. Yeah, Amy Allen for Isla Sakura. Um, you've got Matt Wood. Uh, for General Grievous, that was one of, one of Jess's favorite characters. Alan Harris as uh, Bosk over here, and then Jeremy Bullock as Boba Fett. Anyway, up top there is Ralph McQuarrie doing his thing. And we've got this autographed Atari 2600 back here, actually from Nolan Bushnell, who founded Atari, so we got him to sign that at a gaming convention back in the day. Um, and of course, on display next to that is this bottle of hot sauce, and that's signed by Billy Mitchell the king of kong and in keeping with the autographs without trying to make this like a four hour video i do have some other stuff i've got tons of autographs and unfortunately tons of artwork that i don't have displayed because we've run out of wall space and uh things that we just kind of hold to the side but here's some autographs that might look familiar dwight howard from the magic uh we've got the guys from anthrax that signed this i love this album cover too by the way weird al Cindy Lauper, Steel Panther, Machine Head, Alice Cooper, the Jason Newstead Band, Molly Ringwald, Ugly Kid Joe, had some fun with them tour back in the day, Alter Bridge, Alice in Chains, 30 Seconds to Mars, I want it that way. Godsmack. More Sambora. Jericho. 
down with Phil Anselmo. Big and rich. More anthrax. This is Mary's. Daryl Hall and John Oates. And in this moment. Like I said, that's kind of scratching the surface on autographs at least. Well, let's get to more Star Wars stuff. So sitting behind me on the other shelf here, we've got Ray and Kylo battling it out. Um, while Mini Luke looks <laughs> on in the past. Uh, this is a document holder that I won at Star Wars Celebration, um, I think in Orlando. And this was a prototype, so this was kind of one on one of one. Not one on one, one of one. In the back there is the escape from Death Star game with the retro figure of Tarkin in there. Um, I love these little guys. There's a matching one on the desk behind me, and it would trip if the light is broken in between them. Some laser stuff. There is a retro Chewbacca. Um, there is a mouse droid back there, as well as Bastan. Bastan. Uh, I had such high hopes for that character, and it just fizzled out uh, from Rogue One. But I still love the character anyway. And when I talk about autographs, I'd be remiss, actually, because I almost did forget this. This is uh, Adam Driver. Let's see if we can hold this in the light the right way. Uh, that Mary got uh, on sale or clearance at Topps Authentics uh, a couple of Christmases ago, so after Christmas. I wish it was signed by both of them. This is probably one of my favorite scenes in any of the Star Wars movies. That's right, in any of the Star Wars movies. When that saber comes to Rey instead of going to Kylo, that is just pure awesome. So on the shelf below Ralph, uh, we have uh, TIE Fighter which was supposed to be the scale TIE Fighter um, back probably from like 2004 time period. Uh, Non-scale Millennium Falcon that's actually tipping over. You can see the landing gear is um, kind of up because I put all of my lanyards um, on the front end of the Falcon, so it's probably not a good idea. And we've got this uh, Japanese lantern Death Star. I want to be gentle with it before it ends up falling, but I love that thing. And Hoth, again, Empire, my favorite stuff, so there's just a myriad of Hoth stuff put on a shelf with a lot of dust. Snow speeder from Hoth on the shelf above, as well as some cereal boxes that were giveaways if you attended panels at Celebration, um, I want to say in like 2010 in Orlando. So you go to collecting panels, etc. They usually give you gifts, and this was one of the gifts that you got uh, on the way out, as well as I've got Vader's TIE Fighter up here, a lot of dust, um, some mini gentle giant uh, bus here of characters. These six inch guys that I, they are the death of me as far as trying to stand up so I've just given up. Ray falls down all the time. I have a ton of other six, fi six inch figure guys that I am just not going to display because they are impossible to stand up. So some of them are in the packages in the back. Those are the guys that I liked the most including Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot is back there. Um, he was a hard guy to get. Um, at Celebration uh, a couple of years ago, I think in, in California. As far as Power of the Force guys, um, I'm not a giant fan of the Power of the Force line from back in the day, but I do like these little diorama sets of um, Obi-Wan fighting Vader, and then, then below, um, it's Luke and Leia swinging uh, to safety. And then on the wall are some of my favorite Star Wars figures. These are, uh, at least right here, Figures based off of Ralph McQuarrie concept art, and then we've got Obi-Wan and uh, Yoda there. Um, Star Killer instead of Skywalker, if you guys know your Star Wars history. The prototype Boba Fett, um, and uh, Stormtrooper. White Stormtrooper had like a laser sword and a shield. This Vader is one of my favorites. He's battle damage from the Force Unleashed, so. Yeah, that was, looks really really cool looking. The other Vader that I really like, or I guess at this point he's still Anakin Skywalker in the package at least, is uh, Chard. So he's really grotesque looking. I'm surprised that they released that as a figure and uh, I'm not so sure that I would ever take that out of the package because I love the way that they were displayed. And they charge you for one figure when you got two. We've got the classic retro Boba Fett with the rocket fire. Uh, this was like a mail-in from years ago I believe. There you go. The original Boba Fett card, 77, or sorry, 78 to 79, uh, but here he is in his vintage packaging. Similarly in vintage packaging is George Lucas in his Stormtrooper disguise. 
Check out George before the gray hair. And then one thing that I was excited about that they announced recently is that Star Wars comic packs may be coming back soon. Not based off of the Dark Horse comics, but based off of Marvel comics at least. But in this uh, Air to the Empire comic, you got a figure of Mara Jade. So I love this package. I guess we can move on to the next room. What do you guys think? Actually, before we go, I need to show you guys, we do have some Potter stuff as well. Mostly from Universal Studios, but we've got Potter on top of Potter. And then we have the catch-all shelf. If you guys are older, you might remember this Godzilla. You wind him up and sparks come out of his mouth as he walks. We also have Trek, and for some reason, Bret Hart stalking them from behind. The hallway has some artwork in here. Um, not nearly as much stuff as we have that needs to be hung up. Uh, this is from Jamie Snell. And I've got some other stuff here. These are sketches that we had from George Perez um, from Free Comic Book Day for a few years. And we had others that went on year after year as well beyond that. And we do have an autograph here, a multi-cast, multi-signed cast autograph of Lost. Um, this picture from Grey Horn is actually signed by Stan Lee. Um, we've got Ula and the Rancor. We've got this card that has since fallen down in that frame, which is a pain, um, as well as the Droid Hunt artwork from Jabba's Palace. And now we're going to move on to our guest room, which Mary and Jess affectionately call Den Number Two. I like to refer to it as the Paul IMM Geek Guest Room. And I have to start by showing you. The centerpiece of our collection, it's Han Solo, Frozen, and Carbonite. We've got a couple of Arcade 1-Up countercade machines. I love retro stuff. I want more retro games. I wish they would have Ms. Pac-Man in this smaller series as well. And then to the back side of where I was just recording is actually this Jedi robe, belt, and tunic from Galaxy's Edge. And we had picked this up. I just, it was one of those things. You can't wear this in Galaxy's Edge. Nor do I think you would want to wear that because it's like 90 degrees here most of the time, but very similar to Harry Potter and the Wizarding World. I never got a robe there. I did want to get a Jedi robe from Disney because the quality is good. Um, and uh, who doesn't want to be a Jedi? Especially the black style, like Luke, Return of the Jedi. All right, so as far as stuff in this room, we're going to start with everything in this area uh, because this is some of the newer stuff or at least newer display cases. Uh, these are the cases that come from Ikea. You gotta put them together, obviously. They make wonderful display cases for your helmets, especially. The lights that are inside of here were lights that I just picked up at Costco, and they came in like a multi-pack, and they work with a remote control. Great for illuminating everything. And before you guys point it out in the comments, I'll tell you ahead of time, there's a lot of fingerprints in here because this stuff is a magnet. And we'll start at the top. Up top, this is a Black Series Rebel Helmet. Um, not a Novos, but pretty awesome quality. You got the shadow of the camera in there. This is a fan-made prop E11 blaster that I picked up at Megacon years back. I got the stand separately, I believe, on Etsy. Um, and the stand even came with a nice little display card. This Vader helmet is actually from Toys R Us. I think it's Don Post, maybe? Um, and... I love the quality of it. I've worn this before. Um, it's it's just pretty awesome. It's actually just like cheaper plastic, but it works. Um, Jess made this little scene recently while we're in quarantine of Obi-Wan's little residence. Um, and then this is a chance cube that I made for celebration when we had our fan table for the Star Wars Grand Florida Alliance. If you rolled a certain color, you got a patch. Um, this box I picked up at Galaxy's Edge. This is a kyber crystal and a really nice ornate box. I'm going to try to take this crystal out of here uh, and show you guys what it looks like. So in the case, this crystal, actually the bottom piece comes apart there for a moment. But there you go. And underneath there is a switch to turn on and off uh, because this does light up 
So all the light in there. Very cool. And I guess I'll work from left case to right case, but I'll take this, open this over here, so you guys have less glare. You have an EFX helmet, um, Stormtrooper, and a Luke slash Hero Saber. This is from the Disney Parks. This has a blade that can go in here and can ignite. And it comes with a little stand and a little belt clip and everything. I was really impressed with everything that they did with the initial sabers that Disney had at their parks before Galaxy's Edge opened up uh, because we had that lightsaber from the park as well as this Kylo lightsaber uh, from the Disney park as well and the blade also goes in there and you have the cross blades that can fit in there. Um, the little Lego Kylo Ren just made as well. It's missing one of its launching missiles as it was launched at the cat's on the couch and we lost it since that time. This Kylo Ren helmet, it was a Black Series helmet, so it's not a Novos. I did want to buy the Novos helmet while we were at Celebration at one point, um, and they didn't have it in stock. And they lost a uh, significantly price sale as a result of not having it in stock. But I like the way that this helmet looks um, down below. We do have uh, an Novos First Order helmet. And then this is the Boba Fett helmet that was out prior to the Black Series now. So this one has a little line up top where this came in two pieces and put it together. It had electronic sounds and everything in it, so I'm not sure if it works. And I just tried it and it doesn't work because I left the batteries on and uh, Boba is dead, much like in the Sarlacc pit for now, until second season of Mandalorian at least. Then in the other case to the right, and excuse the wires running behind it, but this is glass and you can see through it. Um, these are some items that I truly love. This figure is probably my favorite thing altogether um, in any of the collection. That's me as a Stormtrooper. And to the right of me is uh, kind of a Shogun Samurai um, Imperial Stormtrooper. As well as this guy, he doesn't really fit in here, but I had nowhere else to put him. R2-D2 that we got on sale, I think, from Sideshow uh, back at one of the celebrations. Behind these troopers is my Fez that I wore religiously to Star Wars Weekends years back. Uh, I have many pictures floating out there of me wearing that. That Fez is actually leather made. Uh, and we picked that up at Megacon years back uh, from folks that make Fezes for different fandoms. And then behind all of this is this Stormtrooper wooden doll and this is kind of the doll that is found of a young Jin Erso uh, when her parents or her mother is, is killed and father is taken away to go work on the Death Star in Rogue One and the Death Trooper finds the toy on the floor. This we picked up at Galaxy's Edge. I absolutely love uh, that figure. I look at that almost uh, you know, on a daily basis whenever I'm sitting in this room so lots of cool stuff on the shelf. And above the Stormtrooper shelf, we have this chess set. It's very small, actually. This is about 10 inches or so wide uh, from Galaxy's Edge with the smaller figures. I love this as well. This uh, weighs a lot. You could take this piece out and flip it over, and there'd be checkers in there. Uh, but this is sold at Galaxy's Edge. I'm sure not a big seller, um, although at first, I think, hardcore Star Wars fans went out and got it. Um, it came with instructions on how to play as well, but to me, it's shelf piece. And above the chessboard brings us to the next shelf of Jedi paraphernalia. Um, I got this four-tier lightsaber holder off of eBay and somebody made it, so it's a little wonky with the way it holds it because it's the same width um, that holds the front and back of the saber. So. Normally, if you have sabers, you know that the, the um, back end or so is usually a little bit wider than the front. But nonetheless, we have four sabers. We've got Obi-Wan, we have Return of the Jedi Luke, we have Ben Solo, and then we have the saber that I built at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge when I visited the Galaxy's Edge in uh, Disneyland. And along with the sabers on the shelf, we've got a couple of holocrons here. We've got the Sith holocron. We have the Jedi Holocron, and we've got some Kyber Crystals that are in the packaging from Galaxy's Edge, and a Sith Wayfinder. Those were a lot noisier than I thought they were going to be. 
The Sith Wayfinder I picked up on Etsy. It's just a fan-made prop, um, but I really enjoy it. They've marked the spot that we can go uh, kill the uh, clone of an Emperor in a bucket full of Snokes. But the uh, Sabres and uh, Hollies. I do have to laugh, though, because with the Holocrons, uh, we spent so many hours playing Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and after all, you killed Dark Troopers or uh, Force Wielders or whatever, and you'd have, like, the loot drops of Holocrons come, and it was really kind of, uh, as a Star Wars geek uh, fanboy, uh, their dream come true to have these things finally produced so that you could have them at home. And then the top shelf is kind of a myriad of items uh, in here, and there's some more coming, but we've got a DL-44 blaster um, and the stand. We got that at Megacon. Um, we have this uh, Mythosaur Sculpture Mini from Regal Robot, um, an Imperial Credit from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, some Sabacc cards. This is uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge currency. You have some Chance Cubes in here, some Beskar, Steel. There is another Jedi Kyber Crystal here too. Um, there's a Star Trooper identification card. Some Calamari Flan. Uh, these came from one uh, artist off of Etsy and the other is actually color changing. And this came from uh, a different artist on uh, Etsy as well. And this uh, is a Bluetooth um, caller. So, I mean, this was actually uh, used in the Star Wars movies you know, repeatedly, but at Disney you can purchase this and hook it up to your phone if you want and annoy everybody and use that to call people. And then we have a bounty hunter tracking fob uh, from the Mandalorian. This is also a fan made prop from Etsy. And I'm sure that they'll come out with versions of this from Hasbro at some point, but this looked really cool. I love this and the little Beskar there. Very, very cool stuff. And I know there's a Porg in there too. The Porg is Mary's, um, and he makes noises and animates. All right, we're going to make our way over to this other bookcase. And I think that the last time we showed stuff off, we showed this. So I'm going to try to go a little bit faster uh, through things and just highlight some pieces. The Rancor and the Jabba were from uh, Star Wars Weekends, part of Disney's Vinyl Nation. Uh, the Thermal Detonator, also from Star Wars Weekends, as well as... That salacious crumb up there, he's wearing glasses that light up like lightsabers. Behind those guys are Ben Cooper repro costumes. This one uh, on this side, and this one on that side. So uh, one is a Stormtrooper, one is uh, Yoda, I believe. And these came by way of box lunch uh, a few years ago, so you got Yoda. Um, it's just the mask, it's not the full like little vinyl costume that we used to have in the 70s and 80s. The box in the middle is an actual costume from The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, move down a shelf. We've got Jabba's Palace Max Rebo Band uh, out there on display. I love these guys. Um, and I love that extra scene in the re-release of Return of the Jedi. We've got this R2KT Hot Wheels. Great story around R2KT. If you guys want to use Google and check that out, we have some Japanese die cast uh, Stormtrooper Invader, a little candy dispenser R2, some little micro machines in there, more uh, Death Star, more Vader. Um, these little Mighty Mug guys, if you do this, oops, they fall over and everything falls over. Maybe take two here. Um, their head swivels around, right? So that's cool. Five minutes later, we're trying to stand things up again. Uh, this is a uh, 3D printed Millennium Falcon. Behind there is Ben Quadraneros, uh, star of Rebel Force Radio, um, and Obi Wan, Clone Wars, signed by James Earl Taylor. Um, and we've got little bubbles from Phasma and Vader as well. This shelf is a potpourri of items again. Uh, we've got a little Death Star that did make noise. I think it doesn't anymore. Oh, there it goes. Tiki Tiki's Dagobah Green Tea. There's a Death Star tea infuser back there. This jack-o'-lantern that uh, when you crank the handle, uh, the monster comes up that the Millennium Falcon set in its mouth um, in uh, Return of the Jedi. There's a bunch of stuff here from the 501st parties from Celebration. So we've got the Imperial Bash Cup, 
party like a hut. Uh, this is a like fart cushion with uh, Jar Jar Binks that you sip on him and he makes the noise and stuff. Um, we've got this from Celebration Orlando, a uh, little milk container. Didn't fold up the whole way, but a little fat bantha milk. And it's blue milk, yo! Got a little turvacy type item or canteen metal uh, for 40th Star Wars. This lightsaber is something that Jess made uh, back at the Orlando Science Center years back. It's one of my favorite pieces because she made it. We also have this Tupperware container which uh, is famous in A New Hope for being the pitcher that's used for blue milk. Uh, in my shadow here, not the best lighting. Um, but basically just talking about reusing uh, items that you would either find commonly, like the uh, flash uh, handle for the lightsabers and then Tupperware for blue milk. All of these little items standing here are Star Tots. These are also giveaways from going to collector panels at Celebration, so we got a nice little stack of Star Tots. We've got more random stuff here. We've got a little Death Star mug. Um, back here is Mark Hamill from when he was on The Simpsons. A mini Medal of Yavin in there. This is a box and inside the box a very oxidized uh, magic band. This was the first special type magic band I think that they did at the parks. This was for Star Wars Weekends and it made the noise or it was supposed to when it first released and they had technical issues of it making like a lightsaber noise when you uh, did this at the touchpad. More nesting dolls with Jabba. Lots of patches. We do patches as part of the collecting groups at uh, Celebration. Um, you know, Star Wars Half Marathon Cowbell. Jar Jar Binks, he pushed the button and he dances. Thankfully he's not dancing right now. A little handheld electronic game similar to like Mattel Football. Max Rebo talks. But he never misses a gig, man. And in the back there is a little painting from the guy that does paint the trail. Uh, you got a little Vader painting and then a 501st Stormtrooper back there also. And we get to this lower shelf. We have a collectible ticket from The Force Awakens. This was a giveaway as part of going to the uh, little Disney fan event that they had for opening night. A couple little helmets. That's what Disney products also. Uh, some unopened packs of Star Wars trading cards of Return of the Jedi, A uh, New Hope, and the Empire Strikes Back in there. And some more little helmets there, and we've got a Medal of Yavin. That's a Disney re-release. That's not the Master Replicas. And I did have a Master Replicas Medal of Yavin at one point and sold it. And then from Disney Parks we have Mickey's Jedi Starfighter. To the side, a little pet droid. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge pins. Uh, Vader cereal box in the back. And a uh, plush Death Star. Down below, we got this awesome Lego set that was exclusive to Star Wars Celebration that Paul uh, picked up for me from IOM Geek. And then we have the big classic figures of Yoda with the orange snake and Lando. This is actually signed by Billy D. Williams on the other side of that. It's just buried in there. A little uh, Viewmaster with Vader. And this was a giveaway uh, bonus for buying Star Wars Vans sneakers, which uh, Boba Fett is wearing, the checkerboard Vans, and he's on the box of the sneakers. And then tying out the rest of the Star Wars stuff that I was going to show off here today, uh, from Galaxy's Edge, we've got the Yub Nub uh, drink cup, a couple of the uh, containers of the souvenir Cokes that are on sale at Galaxy's Edge. We have the popcorn bucket mouse droid, a couple name tags. That is a spork from uh, Disneyland Galaxy's Edge, not stolen. Someone sent that to me uh, after they started to sell them in Disneyland. And I had been going on tirades online, as you can see in this video, uh, where I was looking uh, forever for the, the sparks to be sold at Galaxy's Edge in, in uh, Hollywood Studios. But thankfully we got one of those. Um, we've got coasters from Oga's Cantina and uh, some chopsticks that I think were from uh, Celebration a few years back. The mall lightsabers connect at the back end uh, to make one long lightsaber uh, if you wanted. And up top we have the Rancor Tooth Beer Flight from Oga's Cantina as well. These are nice heavy cups. They just uh, don't fit inside and there's a little laser 
uh, Death Star up there also. And I almost forgot these goodies. This is a uh, bank. Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite. This, I believe, was a popcorn bucket for R2-D2. Um, we actually have a uh, Norelco First Order uh, shaver here as well. But on this uh, two-foot or three-foot little Vader, we have some things on display, also some medals from the Star Wars races, a uh, 501st Legion um, dog tag. Um, and this is a very cool item. This is a tooth from Roxy the Rancor from the 501st in Orlando. If you guys have gone to celebrations before and seen the giant Rancor that is made, uh, I believe, from the garrison in Jacksonville. Um, but Roxy's been on display locally in Florida for many conventions, and they had sold these as uh, fundraising items. In this case, off to the side, which is a little problematic because we put these back to back and we need to rearrange things a little bit. Uh, we have some Indiana Jones items in here. So we've got the idol. We've got his fedora. We have the eyepiece to the staff of Ra over here, if we can get this to focus. There we go. And we've got Indy back here. Underneath that Indy shelf, we have another Indy shelf with Mickey. Oh, idle down there as well, in the shape of Mickey. And then we've got Tron items. A little glare happening here. A couple Tron figures. And we've got a little disc and some smaller stuff. Tron in the house. And then Simpson stuff. We've got Mr. Sparkle. You like Mr. Sparkle? And uh, the figures in the back, Joe Perry and Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. As well as uh, Buzz Cola Cup. And this is since 4D Cup from when we went to Myrtle Beach. And we have a little bit of a placeholder here with the Winged Eagle belt from the WWE. And some Iron Maiden goodness. We've got the little spice drum from Nico McBrain's rock and roll ribs uh, and in the back little reaction figures from uh, Super 7 so first records in there and then we have Live After Death and the Trooper bigger figures up top over here we've got a myriad of Ghostbusters items from Spirit Halloween we've got some pretty cool replicas over the last few years from Spirit including this Ghost Trap up here, and the meter, and the Proton Pack. Um, and then we have some Ghostbusters items on the shelf below. A little bit of everything in here. I'm trying not to get shadows in the way. Um, and then more Ghostbusters. Playmobil figures, including Ecto-1. Next shelf down, we've got some wrestling stuff happening here, including this ring led by Mean Gene Oakland, um, and all the way in the background there, uh, some classic figures. In the darkness here, we've got some retro guys here too as well. This is uh, one of the original Skeletors, as well as a Street Shark, voiced uh, by Vin Diesel in the commercial, uh, and then uh, He-Man and Skeletor re-releases, uh, I believe, from Super 7. And lo and behold, there is a Stretch Armstrong here as well. Down below, we have some Haunted Mansion goodness from Disney Parks. This was one of the newer items from the Disney Parks. These were actually just on clearance on uh, the Disney site, or Dish Shop Disney site. So, like, probably 25% of what they were when they were in the parks when everybody was lining up for them. And before we get to Marvel, we got to talk about DC. We got some DC stuff here. I do love Batman. I used to be a huge fan of the old Mega figures, um, which I would go crazy and broke trying to repurchase all of that stuff. Uh, but we have the 66 Batmobile and newer version. And some six inch Batman figures or Justice League figures, as well as the Barbie Batman uh, Wonder Woman and Superman. Jesse built this awesome Batmobile Lego for me and we also have 
And we're on to Marvel guys. These are the three and three quarter inch figures that we had collected for a while until they stopped making them. We've got a bunch of bigger guys in here, the Hulks, Thing, etc. These guys fall down a lot as well, but not as much as the six inch figures. And by the way, some of them fall down very oddly in this room. Uh, that's a tale for another day, uh, but sometimes they're positioned to a point where they couldn't possibly fall unless somebody or something knocked them over. And we have Mary's shelf of goodness with this big Groot. You can see behind me there's actually underoos back there for Skeletor. Uh, but Groot has his uh, shield identification uh, attached to him. This big Groot is, uh, I want to say like three feet tall or so. And then we have multiple Groots. Um, this is an artist made Groot, as well as uh, this Groot back here from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie is made out of uh, kind of like foam. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, pop figure Groots, including Angry Groot. We have a Hydra pin back here. We actually have artwork from Banky uh, that's not in a frame back there. Um, but we've got another little Groot back here, kind of like pop up Groot. Um, Groot, Groot, Groot. And this is the cat from uh, Goose from uh, Captain Marvel. Kind of like the lucky cat. I really dig that. Um, and this is more Groot, more Groot, more Groot. And then you have Howard the Duck from Guardians of the Galaxy Ride. Tangential there, uh, reference, uh, from Disneyland. And then we get into the Marvel 6-inch figures, right? So tons of Marvel 6-inch guys. And we kind of separated this out into, like, spider man -y, Invaders in the back, um... Fantastic Four type guys. We had a leftover Thor back there too, so a lot of spider man -y type guys in here. Green Goblin. I love Green Goblin as a villain. Um, and Spider-Man. That is more of a newer Hulk there. Um, but those two used to be posed in a, a fighting way on my work desk for a long time. Doctor Doom recently came out. We have Movie Mysterio, the comic Mysterio, I could never get in the stores because it was too much uh, after market sales from the scalpers, but they're re-releasing him, so haha -ha on you, scalpers. So we've got one of those pre-ordered. Craven, he looks awesome. Moon Knight, who doesn't love Moon Knight? Um, and uh, Ghost Rider. But speaking of Ghost Rider, there's an even better version on his Hell Cycle here. And then we've got Black Widow and Ant-Man doing his thing. We've got Wolverine facing off with the Hulk. And I love this Hulk figure. In the back are these three and three quarter inch uh, boxes that they had released at the time with the Inhumans. Um, classic Fantastic Four with Herbie um, and the uh, classic retro uh, Avengers back there. This Stan Lee figure came out recently, and uh, I am not taking him out of the box. It looks really cool, and I'm not really sure why there's a Captain America shield in there, of all things, but you would think more Peter Parker or Spider-Man type thing, but I really, really love this figure and what it represents. And then we've got more six-inch guys here, including Ultron. You got Hulk fighting the Hulkbuster Iron Man. I'm going to move around to try to get out of the light here for you. Red Skull uh, was a newer acquisition for me. He's got the Cosmic Cube, which ties in to something else that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, got some other movie figures in here, including Hawkeye. And more comic guys. Love that Loki. She-Hulk, fantastic. I love She-Hulk, although now they just call her Hulk. Um, and then you've got Iron Spidey, um, we've got some Guardians action happening here. That's not a uh, Legends Groot, by the way, that was like one of the cheaper toys, but we put him in there. There is a Legends um, Groot that's coming out soon, three different sizes. I won't be getting that, that's on pre-order. I'm in the back, Vision, you got Wanda, um, Tony Stark, and the uh, movie Thor back there. This is for more or less the X-Men shelf here. I know that there's a Thanos back there, but you have Colossus. Colossus is always my favorite X-Men, uh, in addition to Cyclops and the Juggernaut here. 
those figures are massive. I wish there was more room to pose everybody. Nightcrawler, Deadpool, Cable. I love that beast figure. Um, Storm with the mohawk. I'm not sure if I like Storm like that or Storm with the longer hair more. Uh, the White Witch, Magneto, Mystique has fallen even though I've put like that I've cheated and used like fun tag on the bottom of their shoes to make them stand, but they still fall. Cyclops, an older version of uh, Colossus back there. Jean Grey is Phoenix. Um, Iceman hanging out in the back there. Uh, Cannonball. Um, Dark Phoenix back there. Love, love, love Dark Phoenix. And Domino back there too. And then we get to this stuff. And this stuff. I love some of the props, whether they're made officially or not. This Thor hammer is not official. This is a fan-made prop from Megacon. This is just a popcorn bucket of Black Panther. And there's Toy Story stuff over there too, so you guys don't think I'm ignoring it. Um, but Black Panther popcorn bucket was cool. I didn't buy the Black Panther helmet because I'd be down for more of a mask than a helmet for him. You know, because it sounded similar like Spider-Man's mask, but... That's just the uh, Spider-Man like Halloween mask. This is Ant-Man. Uh, these are electronic, by the way. They make noises and everything. And Iron Man, and his front of his helmet comes off. And I'm sure I would probably just knock everything down by doing so. Um, and then we have uh, some of my favorite stuff that I get to look at every day. Um, this is something that Mary and Jess bought me for Christmas. It is a prop that I wanted for a really long time and never bought it myself. Uh, we have a fan-made prop from the Guardians of the Galaxy. Another fan-made prop for Doctor Strange. Um, we have Black Panther's bracelet. And we have the Infinity Gauntlet. I'm not sure if this works or if this is going to just go crazy. There we go. And at one point, Hollywood Records released um, Awesome Mix Volume 1, the soundtrack of the Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll get this to focus eventually. There we go. On a cassette. So it could be just like Peter Quill. And then I said I would get back to the Red Skull's Cosmic Cube because this Cosmic Cube came in a two pack with this prop along with the figure, which was super awesome. We had a fan made version of a Cosmic Cube. And I thought this was great and it lit up and everything, but this, it pulses, it just looks awesome. So here we go with our Avenger stuff. And I think that's going to do it for now for this tour. I did leave out stuff too, so we've got a whole other room of sports and we've got a horror room as well. And we'll get to that stuff at another time. And I'm sure we're going to keep adding Star Wars stuff as well. But for now, this is it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys can let me know below what you think your favorite thing was that we showed off here. And thank you very much for hanging in there and watching all of this. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great day. We'll see you guys.